Hi, hello friends, how are we doing tonight? Are we doing okay? I hope you're doing great. Today we have a review of the film. Why do I talk in slow motion sometimes? I don't know. But we're reviewing the film Lumachrome Purple. But first, let's make a drink. I don't know who made that noise, but it wasn't me. Trying not to spill. <laughs> I am like one of the most clumsy people, like, I spill almost everything, like it's part of my morning ritual to spill my coffee in the morning. And I'm not even like saying that as a joke, like I spill everything. Anyway. <laughs> now you might be wondering why, Sierra, are we making these fancy drinks all of a sudden? Why aren't you sticking to your cheap ass beer like you normally do? Well, I have an explanation for you. I'm starting a new thing on the channel where when I review a roll of film, I make a drink that sort of reflects the film colors in that film, hence a purple gin and tonic, as we have here. The series is going to be called Analog Spirits. Let's call this one the Lomachrome Purple Tonic. I can't think of anything else more creative, so... Just whatever, you know, whatever. It's a gin and tonic. Now, in order to make this purple, I added some acai powder to it. And I gotta be honest, I'm really scared to try it. I feel like it's not gonna be very good. <laughs> that is actually pretty good. Um, I can't even taste the acai part of it, so. Yeah, good thing about acai is it has a bunch of antioxidants and other healthy things that I don't really know, but it's good for you. So, this is good for you, technically. So let's get into the actual point of the video now. Lomochrome Purple. <laughs> so if you've never heard of this film, Lomochrome Purple is a film created by Lomography. Basically, it changes the hues of some of the colors in your photos. So green turns to purple, yellow turns to pink, blue typically turns green. However, the reds, they tried to make stay the same color because of skin tones. They wanted you to be able to still create portraits. A cool thing about this film is you can shoot it between 100 to 400 ISO, depending on what your taste is. The lower the ISO, the more pastel purple you will get, and the higher the ISO, the more contrast and like darker colors you will get. This film wasn't necessarily new. However, last year in 2019, they actually created a new formula 
for the film, so it is changed a little bit. If you've seen it in the past, it's a little bit different now. I didn't shoot it back then. This is the first time I've ever shot it, so I don't I don't really know personally the differences, but it's available in 35mm, 120, even 110, and they have a single-use camera that holds this film. You can develop it in C41 chemicals, just like any other color film. I shot this on my Canon Rebel XTI, which is a camera where I can change the ISO manually, so throughout each photo I could change the ISO to whatever I wanted. So I tried to play around a little bit and see what really looked different between the different ISOs, and I tried to keep track of it so that I could show you guys what it looks like on each ISO. Yep. <laughs> so I shot this roll on a little camping trip that I took a few weeks ago with my friend Britt. And here are some of the photos that I got. Alright, so this first one I took of the tent that we were sleeping in because first of all the tent is green. So I figured let's see how the film looks with that. And as you can see, the tent looks purple. Are we surprised? Probably not, but yeah, I just thought it'd be interesting to see how that would turn out. These next couple I shot at ISO 400 as well. We went to get some ice for the cooler and we found like this really cool thing off the side of the road. I forget what it was called. It was pretty cool, so I took a few pictures there. We didn't go back into that area, but whatever. This one in particular of like this little shed. I thought it looked really cool because I loved the light purple that the grass at the bottom turned out to be. Like I just think that is such a pretty color. I wish those two longer white sheds in the back weren't there but you know I can't I just go and burn down people's property so they have to be there I guess. This next one I think it was like a school maybe? I don't know, but all the windows were like boarded up and it looked really cool. I think it could have turned out a lot better. The colors kind of look washed out and weird. I don't know, it's interesting because like in this one, the trees like on the hill don't look very purple. Perhaps it's just like the atmospheric distance or something. This one's okay, I don't know. The lens that I used, it, it's not very good when you zoom in, it's not very sharp. I will say, the sky looks very pretty. I love that, like, green-blue color that was captured in this photo. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. This next one is interesting because it really shows the atmospheric distance I was talking about and how that sort of affects the colors because, as you can see, like, the bushes really up close in the foreground are very purple. And then all the hills and mountainous areas as we go back into the photo just turn turquoise. Um, I shot this at ISO 400 as well. I do wish the sky wouldn't have been so cloudy that day, but it is what it is. But yeah, other than that, I like this photo. These next three I took on a hike. It's just of some grass, obviously, and I just wanted to show what the different ISOs looked like. And these I thought were really interesting, like the one at ISO 100 looks very natural. Um, obviously very pastel, but you still get some green in the trees in the back, which I thought was interesting. Um, definitely a lot more purple in the ISO 400 one. Something interesting is, and you'll see in another set of photos I, take, I took later on, It's it seems like the ISO 100 photo looks a lot different than the ISO 200 and 400. Like the 200 and 400 almost look identical. Maybe not in this set, I guess the ISO 200 one looks a lot more green than the ISO 400 one. But you'll see in the next set of photos that I took, they actually look quite similar in the next set, so. Here are the next three photos that I took to show the different ISOs and how they look. Um, as you can see what I was talking about, the 400 and 200 ISO pictures look basically the same almost. Um, whereas the ISO 100 photo looks completely different in my opinion. I think the 100 ISO could definitely be used for more of a vintage sort of look. The colors are very pastel and brown almost. The greens look much more pinkish red than in the other pictures. I do like the other photos more, I think. I love how green the background hill looks in the 
ISO 200 and 400 pictures. It looks very pretty. These ones are my favorite photos, I think, of the roll. It just looks like a dreamland, sort of, which is basically what Lomography was going for for this film. So here's another random one that I took at ISO 100. As you can see, very pastel colors like the other ones. Um, I think, it, you know, it really just depends on your taste and what you like. Now you can take a look at the rest of the photos I took that were pretty random and yeah, here they are. Cue transition. Lying in a room I hate Smells of smoke and the cheaper kind of taste I call you once to hear your voice The sound reminds me of the choices The both of us have made Overall, this was a fun film to try out. I think I will definitely be shooting it again sometime. If I shoot it again, I don't think I'll be shooting it at ISO 100 unless there's some sort of idea or look that I have that those colors would look really good for. Depending on whatever my scene is that I'm shooting, I would either do 200 or 400 ISO just because they look really similar. I will say the grain is pretty fine in this film. I was impressed. I am trying out a new method of scanning my film. I'm trying the DSLR method because my scanner, I'm ready to throw out the window. If these scans seem a little non-perfect to you, that's why I'm still getting the hang of it. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not Mrs. Perfect over here. I know it looks like I may be perfect, but I'm not. I know it's pretty surprising. <laughs> I've had a couple of people ask me how I scan my film and I'm going to be making a video on it at some point. I just, I haven't done it yet because I've had so many issues with my scanner. I didn't want to. It was an awful process to be honest. Um, let me know what you think of this film. If you like it, if you hate it, if you shot it before, if you want to shoot it, which ISO you like it best asked, asked, as, let me know your thoughts. See you guys next time. Clink. Bottoms up. Bye.